Hey, this is Mark Davis with Big Water Adventures. I want to do a walkthrough of a boat that I just got from Blue Way. Brand new hull. It's a 2600 Pure Bay. I've had 2400s in the past. In fact, I've had five of them. This year, I stepped up to the 2600. It's a really unique boat. It's essentially a foot wider and two feet longer than the 2400 is, but it's very similar in terms of performance, draft. Let me show you everything I've got on it and everything I've got in it and give you an idea of, you know, essentially how I rig it and the reason I made the decision to jump up to the 2600. Starting at the very bow, I've put this Garmin unit on the front with a ram mount, very heavy ram mount, um, you know, model of Garmin, personal choice, but I've got it on the front and if you back up and look, you can see how much room we've actually got here. So that Garmin looks like it's way, way far away. We'll get back to it in a minute, but it's way up there. If you're up on the bow and you need that unit on the front, great. If not, you can pull it off. Moving from the Garmin to the anchor box, I actually have, it's a fortress anchor in there. It's 3 8 inch rope. It goes way down in there. I don't know how much we can see. There you go. Way down in there to the anchor rope. You can see I've got probably 25 feet of chain on there. I think that's half inch chain, 3 8 but it's a lot. I believe there's 500 feet of 3 8 inch rope on there. And like I said, that's a fortress anchor. If you wonder why this plug's hanging down here, that gets me to my next thing. I have a motor guide XI-5 trolling motor on this thing right now. It's the longest shaft that they make. I put these zip ties on here. There's the plug. I don't leave it plugged in. When you plug it in, you can put it just like that. But these zip ties, I put it inside my anchor locker, just like that. That way, no matter where I'm at, salt water's not hitting the plug unless I'm using it. And of course, you know, I'm obviously using different types of lubricants on there to keep that thing from corroding. So once we back up a little bit, we go to the first of four live wells. Yes, you heard me. There's four live wells on this thing. They're all controlled. I'll show you in the helm station later, but this is the one in the front. Essentially, it's real easy. You can see what's in there. And if you're not using it, it's just part of your platform. So. In use, it's a live well. When it's not in use, you're standing on it and you're fishing. Backing up, you've got the classic configuration, same as a 2400. You see over here, that's a rod locker, that's a rod locker. There's your step up to your cooler and that's your large compartment. Going through it, you see I've got some stuff in there. I just came off of a chute. So I've got fish grips, I've got de-hookers. Uh, I think that's a bump board on there. We were looking at some speckled trout. Same thing on the other side. You see I've got my, uh, that's actually my utility box. It's got a little bit of everything in there. There's my uh, power pole control. There's my trolling motor control. And these are actually rod boxes and they had rods in them before I took everything out. So the step up, you got a cooler right here. That's leftovers. You can see, easy enough and it steps up to that front deck. I love that they've got this thing recessed like that because it makes a beautiful step up to the top and then of course the cooler's there. Now, little change in the 2600. They've still got the floor box. You can see I've got a couple of fenders in there, but the floor box now has a macerator pump. It's all plumbed and insulated. So essentially, you know, you got a big giant fish box. I mean, I could literally stuff a 80 pound Wahoo up in there, 50 pound Cobias, Whatever you want to do, you can put them in this fish box, and when you're done, push the button, grind everything up, send it out the back. It actually goes down through there. See, I need a little do a, do a little more brush work. I didn't quite get those clean as I needed to. All right, now when we turn around, we've got a jump seat, and essentially, coming off the floor right here, you can see where we're at, a couple of cup holders, and we go to the second live well. I've got a couple of nets in here. This one, the neat thing about Blue Wave, the things that they figure out is that if you're not using it, it's something else. And I'm gonna show you some more of this. So this one's a jump seat that's also a live well, second live well. Coming off the jump seat, I actually put a couple of rod holders in here. Now, these rod holders are actually facing forward. They're facing this way. Reason that I do that, when I'm on the front deck, I find it works a lot better to have some place to put that rod holder that's angled toward the front deck. Also, if I've got my power poles down, I can literally put rods out here if I'm using a crab or cut bait or whatever. I can put them out and I can fish from the front of the boat and actually have a rod locker, or excuse me, actually have a um, rod holder. Next to it is one of two gas fills. Now, one thing Blue Wave did, absolutely love this. This boat with my truck, I've got a 350, 
it's very long, long bed, got a camper shell on it, the whole deal. So I'm, I'm rolling long coming in. A lot of times I'm looking for a place that I can get it long enough to fill up. This is the first of the fills. There's one on the other side. There's two of them and they're midship. By doing that, they essentially made it to where I don't have to pull, you know, 60 feet out in front of the pump to get to it in the back, which I absolutely love. I'll show you on the other side, literally mirror image. There's our floor box, drink holder, mirror image, same thing. Rod holder going that way and another fill right there. Now to go back around to the port side, something I absolutely love. On the 2600, there is actually, you could get in there and if you need to use the head, whatever you want to do, if you see what I did with it, I put two fire extinguishers that are mounted here. There's my flare kit, my two whistles. I got a cutter here. I've got a throwable, four cushions, and I've got all my panels right here. So it's real clean, everything in there, and I've still got room to where I could literally go in here if I needed to you know, use a restroom in a bucket or, or what have you. Down here on the bottom, you see a little green flashing light right there? That is my Sea Monster. That's my charging system. That essentially will monitor, I'll show you where it's plugged in in just a second, that'll monitor everything I've got on this boat. I can divert power when my big motor's running, when the Suzuki's running, I can divert all the power to the trolling motor batteries, recharge my trolling motors. Really neat system from the same folks that make power pole. Need to check it out, it does a lot of things and it, <laughs> it makes life a lot easier. You'll never have dead trolling motor batteries again and you'll never have to worry about getting an emergency start offshore. So closing that up, turn that light off that was up right there. You see it up on the top, just like that. Shut that door. We come back out, since we were talking about the charging system, got one plug on this boat, just one, right here. That's it, it's on the starboard side. You can see where I'm at. We've got rod holders here, four of them. They go up into the hard top. This boat actually has a hard top. You can have pretty much any configuration that you want, set up however you want to do it. Really neat, I'll show you these in a minute, but I've got uh, uh, spreaders on the front and the back. Spreader lights. Got a glove compartment right there. I get distracted easily when I start walking around the boat. So now we're pretty much midship. You look to the top and they got really easy buttons on everything. Red lights, white lights, forward spreader, aft spreader. This thing will flat level light up like a Christmas tree if you need it to at night. Those uh, LEDs that you saw on the front, I'll show you the ones in the back in just a second, but it'll light this thing up and they most definitely have made it to where you can do it. Before I get to the console, this boat is storage, storage, storage. There's some extra sunglasses. There's a visor, glove compartment right above the helm station. Now, I've only got one unit on here right now. I hadn't decided exactly what I want to do, but I've got the other Garmin tied to the one on the front. It's all integrated. Here's all my Suzuki gauges. Get in nice and tight here where you can see all their buttons. Everything's really nice and tight, zipped up. The panel's real easy. You have, you've essentially got, the way I set this up, there's four live wells on this boat. So I've got everything set for the front two, for the forward live well, forward recirc. That's for the front two live wells, aft live well, aft recirc for the back two live wells. Got the uh, a, uh, emergency bilge pump and then a manual bilge pump in case you're taking on some water and you need to get it out of there quick. Now I have a standing lean to live well, which is the biggest live well in the boat, I'll show you in a minute. I actually had the controls put separate off of these and it's about as simple as it gets. You can see right there, you got Recirc, Live Well, and there's actually courtesy light, there's LEDs in there because this thing is about three feet deep. If you put the stove pipe in there, it's less, but it's, it's a big Live Well. I'll show you in just a second. I've mounted my power poles. We hadn't got to those yet, but I've mounted those there. And then you saw the um, hanging around my neck, the, the version that you can carry with you. I had that in that front. Uh, starboard rod box it's where I keep everything. I've got Lenco trim tabs on this. This is a push button. It's actually the key fob right there which goes to, if you hadn't seen these things, I don't have a dog in the hunt with these guys other than they make a really cool product. You literally put this thing, it's a kill switch. You just pull it just like that. Boom, it's on my ankle when I'm driving. If anything happens to me and I go out of the boat, See right there, boom, I'm gone. They've got a nice pad on the helm station, real cushy on the feet. Take this off so I don't pull my kill switch out as I'm going. Under here, 
I don't know if this is what they plan on doing, but this is 80, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 15, and 10 Seaguar fluorocarbon leaders. So this is now my leader station, and I mean, it's absolutely perfect for it. Over here, I've got pliers. I've got some venting tools and some other stuff there. On the bottom, you, got, you can flip it down, you can flip it up. Some guys like to sit, some guys like to stand. You've also got a footrest going here. Now, this only has, since I wanted the door on the other side, it's only got the four rocket launchers that go up, the rod holders that actually go up through the ceiling right here. But there's a windshield that you can put on here that I don't have on here right now if you want. There's also a padded seat back that fits right here that has either four or five more rocket launchers going off of it. And then on the back of mine, since I don't use that other stuff, I got to actually back up so I can see all of it. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rod holders on the front. Now, while I'm up here, one cool thing on the hard top, this, my stern light, all I got to do is just unscrew this and pop it up. That's actually the white light for my nav lights, my reds and my greens, if you saw on my panel. So if I'm, I'm wanting to put on my navigation lights for nighttime, when I push these, the red and green is already built in on the front. It's built into the steel rubber rail. We hadn't got to that yet. But the stern light, the white light, is actually on top of the hard top. And all I got to do is flip that up, push one button, and I'm lit. So we're all good there. Now, going to the back deck, you see the drains right here. We're not quite to the back deck yet. Got to show you two drains. There's a compartment that you can get to right there. This is the biggest live well. This is an option. This is a lean post live well that you can put in. And this dude is absolutely giant. You see, it's actually what you're sitting on. It's the entire thing you're sitting on. And I mean, I'm telling you, it, 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 it'll carry some bait and it's deep. You'll get wet to the shoulder pulling the plug out of that thing. If you got the stove pipe in, of course, it regulates it to a couple of feet. Got a couple more doubles as rod holders here. Or you can use them if you've got the seat in, you've got the rod holders actually on top of the seat. Let's see. So, going midship, two things I missed. They've got a cleat on either side. Just to give you an idea, there's our fuel and there's our forward facing rod holder. Cleat midship. Another rod holder. Now this one faces stern. Sometimes if I'm using downriggers, I'll put the downrigger here and actually put the tree, the next one back to put the rods on so the downrigger ball's out, actually out in front of the baits. It makes it a little bit, bit easier. Same thing on this other side. This is the midship, same deal. You got your other fill up there. One there, one there. Go back, got another cup holder right in front of, you're gonna see this seat in a second. But you got a cup holder here, another rod holder facing to the back. Cup holder here, check this out. Power port in between the starboard seat. You can see that real close. There's a courtesy light that'll flip on right there. So there's a power port right there. And then here with blue wave seats, you just push that, come back to here, flip this up. I think I missed it. There we go. Flip that up and you've got a seat. You've even got a seat with armrests. What Blue Wave is about is economy of motion and economy of space. So what you see as a seat turns into a tackle storage system. I mean, this boat, when I said it's all about storage and everything they've got in it, it's amazing. And then when it's all done, you fold the arms up, push this down, and when you put pressure on it, this little latch right here, you see it pops back up, just like that, and this thing's locked where it doesn't come up. Now, it's the same thing on the other side. I don't need to open this one up, it's the same deal. Another one, another power port right there in between the two. Now, the center one, same deal, push down on the latch, two hands and one GoPro. If you raise it all the way up, you have your fourth live well. So to recoup, we've got the bow live well, the jump seat, the lean post, and this is your stern live well. You got a snap right here, pop that snap. You got another seat. You got armrests. So going across, if you're not using them for live wells and you got more people than you got fishing going on, you can literally go across and open all these seats and you can see a lot of people on this boat. And when you're not, 
You just close that and you got a back deck if you're fishing and you got the live well in the center. The hatch is in the back. That's where I, this boat, I, I almost skipped it, has a wash down. That's the hose. The wash down is right up under here. Hopefully you can see that without me getting on my hands and knees. But it's right up underneath there on the port side. You've got that hatch on that side. Another cleat right there on the stern. In the center, I've got an insert that I keep my ethanol, my Lucas ethanol treatments right there and the ropes, everything there. But if you need to get to it, all you gotta do is just pick this thing up and you can get to everything you need in your engine hatch. There's the stuff for my power poles, all my hoses, all my pumps. See how nice and clean it is, all the fittings. I mean, this boat is slick and it is rigged out right. So there you go. Now, put that back in there. We are almost to the end of this boat without getting out of it. That's the other side. One of the things I love that they did this year on this 2600, look at the size of that drain. I know what you're thinking if you're watching this. The big drains on these hatches like this, I love it. You don't have to worry about having water and condensation, everything in there. If you see the water that's in there, I literally just got done washing this thing. All the latches that are on there. Pretty much everything I hadn't talked about, but almost every single latch that I have is that, and they all lock. See literally every single one of them. So I can pretty much lock everything up on this boat. Now, give you a shot from up top to where you can see it, even though I can't see it because it keeps going off. That's what you're seeing from the front with the hard top. One last one that I missed. There's another storage in the back coming off the rocket launcher. Another glove box. I'm telling you, if you can't find some place to put something in this boat, something's wrong with you. And then, yet another power port sitting right there up top and up high. Okay, let's get out of this thing real quick. And I'm just going to take a walk down the side of it and show it to you from the start. I've got it on my McLean trailer, which I've used McLean since we started this thing. Neat thing about it, if you go around the front, they give you an entire wheel assembly. It's actually got, if you look, it's actually got the hub, everything on there that comes off. So it's an entire wheel assembly that's on this thing. Only thing is you want to make sure you do not step on this. Ask me how I know. So going back around, walk it all the way to the back, see the trolling motor mounted on the front. And if you see, if you look, it's up here a ways. I mean, it's level, I'm six foot three and it's, it's level with me, so we're up here. I mean, that's probably six foot right there to the top of the trolling motor, I'm betting. So going all the way down, this is what she looks like as she sits. You see the door in the side. See my cameraman, hi cameraman. Cameraman waving at you. Going to the back, one thing I absolutely love off this thing. I've actually started using it for a reason that we're not supposed to use it for specifically. Look at the swim platform coming off of this thing. Big extended ladder here. Get a hold of this, comes all the way down. I mean this thing literally, how about that? Touches the floor coming up. As I said, they've really thought about this thing and made it what it needs to be. Pop it back up again. And you notice, even though I'm holding a GoPro in one hand, it's that easy to just flip that thing back up and I've really done this all with one hand. I've got my power poles that we talked about, two 10 footers that are on there, Lenco trim tabs, Bob's machine shop jack plate. Now, my 350, Suzuki, my big 350 Suzuki with twin counter rotating props is more than enough to push this boat. I love it. We had four guys in it on the last shoot, 90 gallons of fuel, 50 gallons of water. We had absolutely no issues whatsoever. Um, getting it up on plane, handling the big water. It's an incredibly dry boat. You can see all the specs on it if you look at Blue Wave. Um, look at their website. One thing I would suggest, once again, no dog in the hunt, just a really good product. These My Wedges, put two of them on these Rams, on this Suzuki 350, and you won't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about motor toters or anything going crazy and doing something stupid when you're going down the road. So, 
One thing they would like for me to point out with Blue Wave, that right there, all you gotta do is just read it. And that right there, these things are tough and they won't sink, I promise you, upright and level flotation. You probably noticed in the lines on this boat, look at the two steps. You actually have got them where you can see, I think you can see them both right there. Get in a little closer where you can see them. That one to give you an idea where it's at, you can see it on the fender first. That's the first one and it comes right off almost maybe a foot and a half to two feet off the hard top, so probably, I'd say eight to 10 feet up the boat. But then you go to almost dead midship, maybe just slightly back, and there's the second one. And you can see that's almost centered directly in front of the wheel and the helm station. I'm not even gonna pretend that I understand hydrodynamics and what those steps do and how they work. What they told me is, is you'll be amazed how easy this thing jumps up on plane and I was for it being two feet longer and a foot wider. It's pretty amazing. It's a great hole, it's a dry hole, it's a maneuverable hole, it floats shallow. And then if you see coming down this side, it's actually got a pretty steep V for the first portion of it and a big flare. You'll see my numbers on the boat are actually following this first line right here. And they're, I mean, you see in my hand, they're a ways underneath. That's a stainless steel rub rail right there. Um, they're further in because this flare, it's a big angle and that's what's gonna keep you dry. But then if you look down, you can see how that flares out coming off of those two steps. So the thing to take away is that this is a knife edge that cuts into a nice level playing field that will get you up on pad quick. But this part right here is gonna keep you dry and deflect the water away from you and cut the waves. Nice smooth ride, keeps you dry. That, folks, is Blue Wave 2600 Pure Bay. A complete and total walkthrough, ending with my boys at McLean Trailers, which is pretty much all I've ever had. I guess there's some other good trailers out there, but I don't know, because I've used McLean and never had a problem with them in 14 years of Big Water Adventures. So if you wonder who those guys are, this is how we're gonna end it, right there. So, that's my new 2600 Pure Bay from Blue Wave. A Little different than the 2400, does some things better. 2400 does some things better. But if you want a boat that is two feet longer, a foot wider, will handle a load of people, and is a little more of an offshore boat, this 2600, I'm gonna tell you, we were catching redfish. We'll be catching redfish in skinny water, but this boat will do a lot more when you start getting past those jetties and past that surf line. So hopefully you enjoyed it. I wanted you to see everything on it and everything I had it and the way I had it rigged, and that's it.